Hi, this is Cousin Russ. Um, a lot of blog posts that I read, and I'll talk about in a second, but the blog post that I uh, read offered a suggestion, or I read it and added the suggestion that I wanted to implement myself, and that is uh, how do I uh, preserve my ha family history blog post and or combine my blog post into my genealogy program. Uh, the blog post uh, will be in the comments uh, for the blog post. And the blog is called Parallax View. And uh, the, the author of this is a friend of mine, Tony Proctor. But he subtitles his Parallax View as a different view on things. And he is has a different view on things, but creates a lot of interesting thought, at least for me. And uh, what I wanted to point out was that what he was talking about is preserving what we do. And there's a item here partway down into his uh, blog post that talks about preserving our blog posts in uh, as a way for us who do research and have blogs uh, to combine that with the research. And that's what I want to try to explain what I did after I read Tony's um, blog post. It was about uh, the future of online trees. And I thought about how, what does that mean for me? Or what can I do about that? And what I realized so when I did looking at my blog post, uh, I have done a couple of, I won't call it proof arguments, but I have worked through some situations in my database, but I didn't put the information in my database. I, in fact, did it in a blog post. Now, let me demonstrate that here. I have a, a lady, Vivian Howard Worthington, and um, I was trying to make a connection between uh, myself and a cousin that I made. And I had their tree, my tree, but I couldn't figure out where they matched up because there is something wrong in one of the trees. So I'm going to select her and go to the people person view. And what I did is I put the web address to my blog post in two places. I want to be able to see it as a fact. And I have a custom fact that I created called web address. And I have in the web links tab at the bottom, I have the name of the blog post and the web address for it. Now I'm going to double click on the title because that'll open up the window. So there's the web address and there's the title of the blog post. But if I click on this globe over here, I can open up the uh, blog that was created and I'm going to bring it and put it on the screen. And here is the link that I put into my blog. And there's the link. And uh, and this is what I wrote up about this problem that I have, how I connected to these three people in my database. They weren't in the database and I had a problem, but how I solved that problem I uh, had already done my own research, but I described how I resolved that problem in the blog post, including citations on that census record and um, how I, in fact, resolved the, the problem that I had. And it took me, and I wrote it up in the blog post. Now, that blog, that information in the blog is not in Family Tree Maker yet. Um, I may or may not, but what I did was put a link 
to that blog post in the web links tab. And because I want to be able to find it again, I also created a web uh, links, a web address links to that blog post included, and I included the citation so I can get to it. I haven't figured out whether I want to make this link available online or not at the moment. I, it is not because I have marked it private. I may change my mind going forward when this tree is online. But at least in Family Tree Maker, when I'm working on a person and I see the web address, because uh, I normally don't look at the web links tab, but I want to look because I've got it up here. So, because I normally work in the task menu or the research notes menu, but I wanted to, uh, something to wake me up that looked down here in the web links. Let me give you another example. And I'm going to give the example of Samuel. Now, Samuel, um, if I go to Samuel, I know who his parents are, I believe. And I know that he's uh, been married, but I can't find any records on him. But I did a, a lot of research trying to find who he was. And I go to the people, uh, people workspace, person view, and there is a blog post. And in that blog post, I'll bring it over so you can see what the blog looks like. It says, hints to solve a mystery. And this explains the story, but how I resolved that issue. And uh, I had a graphic that I put in there that that brick wall went down. Uh, well, the, the bottom line is, there was, uh, as far as the records that I've seen, and I've been looking for this for a long time, it probably died without a in a document that I found at the Maryland Archives, he probably died without any children. So that's why the brick wall came down, because we believe that he died without any children. But the clue, again, the clue is that I have the blog post here down in the uh, web links tab, and I see it up here it, along with the facts. Now, those two examples were onesies and twosies, but I get another one here, which I haven't done all the, I haven't done the links yet, but I, I will do that. And that is, uh, I have a cavalry unit, the 11th cavalry. And you see down here, these links are links to websites that have is history of, since this is a Civil War unit, I have history and information about all of the battles right in my database. Now, I, I'm not going to probably not going to do it on this unit for a unit. I'll do it for the blog post that I've done. But I also put links to websites where I may find or I will find additional information about specific things like uh, Fort Leavenworth. There's a wiki, Wikipedia website that talks about Fort Leavenworth. I like it to have it. I had like to have this link in my database so I can go to it from within the database. So this is the second use of the web links tab, one for I can get Go to websites that I find interesting information like about a Civil War battle or how I did a blog post on Samuel or Vivian. So uh, that's the name of that tune. And that's how, that's how I'm linking my Family Tree Maker program to my blog post where I have documented some of the conflicting information that I have worked through in um, in my blog post and not in my genealogy database. Now, at some point in time, I may transcribe that blog post and put it into the notes for that person. But in the meantime, I've got it. I've already written it up. So why not use it? So 
in that's my notion at the moment at how to record some combine my research in my genealogy database using family tree maker along with my blog post if you have any questions or comment leave it in the uh, my google plus community or on the blog post and links will be to uh, uh, the parallax view the blog post that i mentioned earlier in the recording thank you have a great day